Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 11. And in the last episode, we created our login functionality. So we can now log in. Um, but we're not really doing anything else, uh, you know, in terms of access control or um, functionality. So what we're going to do first is make it so that when we add an article, whatever user we're logged in as that the ID is going to go into this author field. So we want to remove this this form field. We don't want to manually type in the author anymore. So let's go to add article and just get rid of this form group here. All right, save that. Then we're going to go to the route that we submit this to. So let's go to articles, JS and routes and go to this post request. And I'm just going to comment this out because we don't need the author validation anymore. All right, now we're going to go down here and instead of specifying the author as request body author from the form, we're going to say request dot user because remember when we're logged in, we have the request dot user object and we want the ID, which is going to be dot underscore ID. OK, so it'll automatically put that user's ID as the author. So let's go ahead and save that. And then if we go over here and reload, um, let's actually delete these guys here. All right, so let's log in. So we'll say Brad. And let's add an article and we'll say article one. This is article number one and submit article added. Now, if we go to article one, you'll see it now says written by and then our ID. OK, because that's what we're storing now. So what we want to do is add an extra query to find the user and then I'll put the name here. So let's go to the single article route right here. And um, let's first of all, Actually, let me put that back. Let's bring in the user model, just like we did the article model. OK. We'll just say article model. And then this is going to be user. And then we're going to change this to user. And then we can access the model. So we'll go back down here. And once we fetch the article here, it's going to give us all of the the uh, the data. So what we'll do is we'll say user dot find by ID and pass in article dot author because that's going to hold the user ID. All right. And then we want our function. And this is going to have error and user. It's going to give us the user back. So what we need to do is just grab the render, cut it and let's put it inside here. And then we're going to set. Uh, let's see, we still want the article, of course, and then we're going to set author as user dot name. OK, because we're getting the user object here. We want the name. We're going to put it in as author so we can access this inside the template. So we'll save that and go to article.pug. And instead of doing article.author, we just want author. All right, let's go back and reload. And now we get the name. So now what I want to do is make it so that we can't add an article if we're not logged in. All right, we're not logged in now. We just got booted out because I reset the server. Um, Let's we want to hide the link from people that aren't logged in, but we also don't want people to go to the, the URL manually. So let's first take care of hiding the link. So we'll go to our layout. And just like we did here, we're just going to go uh, right above the add article list item. And let's say if uh, let's do if not user. No, if user, that's correct. And then we're just going to tab this over. And now we're not logged in. If we reload, it's gone. But we can still access this page. So what we can do is we can create a special function for access control. So let's go into our articles routes. And down at the bottom here, say access control. And we're going to create a function. And let's call it ensure 
authenticated. All right, so ensure authenticated, and that's going to take request, response, next. And we can say if, and since we're using passport now, we can say if request dot is authenticated, then we want to just return next. So we just want to move on. Else, okay, if they're not authenticated, we want to send a message and redirect. So request dot flash. And this is going to be danger because we want it to be red. And then we'll say, please log in. All right, and we'll redirect to the login page. So res dot redirect. And it's going to go to slash users slash login. All right. Now what we can do is we can add this to any route that we want to protect. So for instance, the add article page, if we go up here, we can add it in as a second parameter. So let's say ensure authenticated. And now if we save and we go back and reload, we get booted out. Okay. If we log in, Not only does it show now, but if we click on it, we can actually visit the route. All right. We also want to put this into the um, edit form, which is right here. Okay. Any route you want to protect, you can now just add that to, which is really nice. So let's save. Now we also don't want the um, this edit and delete to show if we're not logged in. You can see we're not logged in and it's showing. So let's go to our article dot pug where we have the edit and delete. And we want to check for two things here. One, we want to make sure that the users logged in. So just if user, but we also want to make sure that um, it, the person can only see these if it's if they own the article. So what we can do is we can say if user dot ID, because remember users an object. Uh, and then we want to say equals article dot author because the author field has the the user ID. All right, and then we'll just tab this over and save. And if we reload, it's not there. Now, if we log in, you'll see it is there. And now what I'll do is log out and register a new account. Let's say John Doe. I'll uh, we'll just say J Doe at Gmail. Username will say John and password. Let's submit. And now we can log in as John. And now if we go to article one, you'll see even though we're logged in, we can't see the edit and delete because we don't own that article. All right. But if we were to go to articles slash edit slash and then the ID, we can we can go to the edit page and we don't want that. So what we'll have to do is go back to our articles routes and let's go to the edit where the edit form is loaded. OK, so we're finding the article by ID. Um, then what we want to do is just put an if statement right here and we'll say if uh, article. If article dot author is not equal to request dot user dot underscore ID, then we want to uh, send a message and redirect. OK, so this will be danger. And let's say we'll just say not authorized. OK, and then we'll redirect. And let's just redirect to the home page. All right. So if we go back here and we reload, we get booted out because we're not actually let's log back in as John. All right. And we still shouldn't be able to go to articles slash edit slash ID not authorized. OK, but if we log in as Brad. Click on edit and we can edit. OK, now for the delete, this is going to work a little differently because we're making an Ajax request and sending a response back to the client. So if we go down to our delete right here, 
we're going to first make sure that um, the, the user is logged in. So we're going to check for the ID. So we'll go above the query here. And let's say if if not request dot user dot underscore ID, then we want to send a response. Okay, now this is sending a 200 response, which is everything's okay. What we'll do is we'll say res dot status uh, and pass in 500. Okay, we'll send a 500 error and then say dot send. Oops. All right, and then also we don't want to just make sure the user's logged in, but we want to make sure that they uh, that they own that that article. So let's go. Uh, let's see. We'll go right below the query, and we're going to say article dot find by ID. Okay, and then we're going to pass in request dot params dot ID. So that's coming from the URL, and then function. So this will have error and it also give us the article. And then we want to do an if statement here and we want to say if article dot author is not equal to request dot user dot underscore ID, then we want to send a 500 error just like we did here. OK, and then we'll put an else. And then what I'll do is just grab the remove right here, all of this, and we'll cut and we'll go in here and paste it in. All right. So let's see. Uh, what should I do here? The only way that we can test this is if I put these buttons back. So let's just temporarily go to article.pug and uh, we'll just get rid of that just for now. Whoops. Actually, that should be on the same level. All right. So right now I'm log I'm not logged in. So let's try that delete. And if if we look down here, we're getting the 500 hour. Okay, so that's not going to work. And if we log in as John, and click delete again we get a 500 down here and if we log out and log in as Brad and we click delete it works okay um, we want to make sure that we do hide these though because there's no special error message for that I mean we could somehow get the the uh, the message from the from the error response and put it in the app but I'm just gonna make sure that these are hidden all right, so let's add another article as John. So let's say article one. This is John's article. OK, and now we can see edit and delete. All right, so that works. So we have full CRUD functionality. We have a complete user registration and login system with password hashing. We have access control. We can't add articles without being logged in. We can only edit and delete the uh, the current users' articles. So we've done quite a bit here, and it's it's been it's all been from scratch. Um, so hopefully you guys like this series. Now I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to go from here, just like with a lot of the series that I do, uh, because a lot of it depends on the response from you guys. Uh, I would like to deploy it, so I don't know. That might be the next one. It might even be the last one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I would like to do that. I usually like to deploy apps to DigitalOcean. I think it's the, it's pretty easy to work with, uh, very cheap, and uh, also they, they give you a lot of um, freedom with your server, with your VPS. Okay, so hopefully you guys can use some of the skills that you learned in this course to create your own applications. Um, but that's going to be it for now, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please uh, leave a like if you liked it. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, go ahead and, and visit the uh, Patreon link that's in the description, and you can support the channel directly. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.